Good morning. My name is Anu Mitra, and I'm a docent at the Cincinnati Art Museum. Welcome to Cam Look, your daily dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. Each weekday, a staff member or volunteer will be sharing an object from the permanent collection and posing questions for discussion. Please check back at 10 a.m. every day for a new work and a new conversation. My object today is Sam Gilliam's Arch. Born in Mississippi in 1933, artist Sam Gilliam grew up in Kentucky, the seventh of eight children. His father worked on the railroad and his mother was a seamstress. Gilliam began painting in elementary school and recalls important encouragement from his fifth grade art teacher. Gilliam attended the University of Louisville for his BA and MFA degrees. In between, he served in the United States Army from 1956 through 58, stationed in Japan, where the beauty of Yokohama galleries and a woodcut studio near the Army base pushed him to become an artist. He has made Washington, D.C. his home since 1961. The Cincinnati Art Museum has a number of prints and acrylics by Gilliam from the mid-1970s. However, Gilliam is best known for his frameless, unstretched canvases, such as Cam's Arch. And I remember often stopping by in front of it to understand what was going on. What was the piece trying to tell me? And why did I have so much trouble understanding it? So I decided to take a look. Research into the process and Gilliam's own words provided illumination. I learned that Gilliam absorbed diverse influences, such as abstract expressionism, the Washington Color School, Japanese shibori, and his own personal history as the son of a seamstress. These he folded into his own innovative work, literally. Since the late 1960s, Gilliam began creating sculptural and immersive paintings called drapes. This was a breakthrough technique where Gilliam suspended painted canvases without stretchers. He soaked the unstretched canvas in acrylic paint and crumbled, tied, knotted, creased, folded, and unfurled the paint-soaked canvases to reveal its design. He discovered that in the process of cinching, knotting, and folding the wet canvas, the wet paint touched itself and a pattern emerged as the canvas dried and was unfurled. Gilliam was not only the innovator of the draped canvas, but he also found a way to merge form and color by integrating them. He used the color wheel as the foundation of his art making practice, being influenced by its continuous spectrum of color relationships, combinations, contrasts, complements, and emotional range. But the color chart of the 1960s that dominated the art supply store proved that anything was possible with its range of colors of oils, acrylics, enamels, and house paint. The color chart, which is distinct from the color wheel, had discrete edges and steps in tone and hue. It was dispassionate about the choices to be made and less suggestive of the emotional spectrum evoked by color. The color chart freed up Gilliam to improvise with his selection of colors, while the color wheel allowed him to be expressive with his decisions and choices. The Cincinnati arch in Gilliam's words was painted without a brush when he tied a rope around the painting and pulled it into the air letting it touch the floor briefly, and then pouring paint so that the paint actually ran down the canvas. Commenting on the title arch, Gilliam said that the arc, which is related to the word arch, is part of a circle, so that the work tends to become part of the wall and part of the space beyond the wall through circularity. Arch was also a way of reducing a very large painting 
such as the one that Gilliam did that was 75 feet long, to pieces on the wall that made the viewer feel comfortable. The arch is like a small cape that you might wear. The idea of painting became related to clothing and Gilliam felt his own presence in the painting. And in this way, the language of the painting became a bit easier to think about and understand. By freeing the canvas from its frame, Gilliam released the soft, flexible, draping properties of the canvas, placing his works firmly within the realm of three-dimensional objects. He also put forth his suggestion that the universe is ultimately not capable of being known. Quote, art is contained attention. It gets you puzzled and coming back. The work is about how one might see nature. Ultimately, there might not be a single truth to what you're doing, but you have to keep on charging forward, being fully present, present, end of quote. Do you feel frustrated when you don't understand abstract art? What are some of the strategies that you use to go beyond your initial frustration? Thank you for spending this time with me and I look forward to doing to seeing you again at a future time.